We're here with Wake Forest Sports Hall of Fame inductee Jenny Everett. Jenny, talk, uh, what was your very first impression of Wake Forest? Well, my first impression of Wake Forest has to be Jenny Averill, who is my coach. I mean, she's exceptional. There's no coach better than her, and she was the primary reason why I came to Wake. It was her vision. It was her game plan. I was really excited to execute it. Was there one person who was most influential on you on your playing career here as a deacon? Yeah. I mean, I, I have to go back to Jen. I mean, I'm probably the result of the three-hour-long talks and the five-hour practices, right? But she gets the most out of her players. There's, there's no one else that can motivate her team better than her. Is there a – and you had quite an academic career after mm -hmm. college as yep. well, after your undergrad years. Yep. But was there a faculty or staff member who was most influential on you and your academic career? Yeah, well, the faculty was absolutely outstanding when I was here. The individual attention, one-on-one -on -one attention. So it's hard to single, single out a fa single faculty member. Uh, but Dr. Dunkelberg certainly stood out. Dr. D, Dr. Taylor. Uh, really no one better. Okay. Let's talk about your playing career. What mm -hmm. are your favorite moments playing for the Deacons? Ooh. I mean, there are so many, but probably beating Carolina not once, but three times in a single year was probably a great milestone and a very good memory for me. Is there one thing you learned as an undergrad here that has uh, been a major influence on your life uh, post-college? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to go back, you know, to the model pro humanitate, right? I mean, it really has impacted not just you pursue things academically and athletically, but you got to make a difference in the community, and that's just part of who you are and your character and being able to influence people. Talk about your reaction when you first learned you were going into the Hall of Fame. Oh, I was shocked, right? Because, you know, Wake Forest field hockey, I mean, it's a dynasty. Right, so I was deeply honored to be the start of many future Hockey Hall of Famers. Absolutely, you're the first uh, field hockey athlete to go in, and there is yep. a line to, for future years. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for your time. Jenny Everett, Wake Forest Hall of Fame inductee for 2013. I would like to thank uh, the late, great Butch and uh, Susan Everett, Jenny's parents. Um, they instilled in their daughter such strong values, principle, and character. Um, Jenny, I'm pretty sure that as a child, um, all you ever heard, particularly from your father, was just the endless opportunities that awaited you if you looked hard enough. And um, shoot, I, I'm pretty sure that when you were in utero, that your, your, your dad was like, hey, P.S., um, you can be anything. Like, you are going to be great. And your mom was there all along the way, just like whispering and echoing those sentiments. And, um, you know, that's exactly how you came to me. And that's how, exactly how you continue to live your life. If ever there were to be a first to go into the Hall of Fame for Wake Forest hockey, it was destined to be you, Jenny. You always and continue to put others before you. But tonight, Tonight is about you. It's about time we celebrate you. Ask any former player, coach, administrator, current coach, who should go first, and they would all agree, hands down. It had to be you. During your time here, you put others first, and you have done so ever since. You were the first to attend a teammate's parent's funeral, and you're the first to accept a wedding invitation. And you're the first to respond and defend human rights. You were and continue to be the epitome of self-resilience and preservation, which is exactly what Wake Forest was in need of in 1997. You had attitude, a lot of it, <laughs> right, Amin? A relentless desire for competition, and even more importantly, you hated, you hated to lose more than you enjoyed the victory. Little did I know that I just had recruited the turning point for our program and history was about to begin. How could this little eccentric kid from Rutland, Vermont be a bit overzealous, distant, and over the top with her drive, change Wake's program forever? Over the course of the next four years, we would watch that unfold. Everett would not only shatter the competition, question and challenge her teammates authenticity and passion for the game but help the guide guide the program to its first ever final four academically you struggled <laughs> not gonna lie 
your freshman seminar class, who I believe that professor is still like best friends with you, gave you a B, which would be the only B you received at Wake Forest. <laughs> the rest would be straight A's in business and accounting. Your work ethic was ridiculous. It could be a skill or a tactical situation that you had mastered. You had to master it. Once you missed a penalty stroke in a playoff game in the NCAAs, you then proceeded to take about 10,000 penalty strokes before the next season would begin. And karma would repay you. Because in that next season, you gained another stroke against the very same opponent in the NCAA tournament to advance us to our first Final Four. Another time, during a training, I gave the team a head start on a run through the cross-country trails and told them if I caught anyone, they would be doing one-mile repeats the entire practice. Lignelli had a nervous breakdown and proceeded to freak out. And Jenny said, don't worry. I'm going to go to that highest tree on the last turn and tackle her if she tries to catch up with you guys. You'll be safe. Yeah, you were savvy and creative. You took the swear jar that Wake Hockey had that was full of pocket change and turned it into the team's profitable slush fund. <laughs> Little did I know you had already started day trading. When you took over, most recently, as CEO of the new company, quote, you said, we are a family-driven company with old-fashioned values based on integrity, partnership, optimism, trust, and class. Jenny, you are without a doubt a class act. And we were so privileged to have spent our time with you here at Wake. The life you have created for yourself and your beautiful husband, Amin, are both shining examples of how you listened to those precious words your parents spoke to you about possibilities. Congratulations, and we love you. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate fellow inductees. I guess this officially means that we are old. <laughs> I'd also like to congratulate and recognize that we're going to be inducted on the Friday the 13th. Thanks for that. <laughs> but we've had dinner and drinks, right? So let's start off with a question. What makes Wake Forest great? What is it? Not anyone shout out at once. People, right? It is the people. So I need to tell you a few stories about the people that I encountered at Wake Forest. And of course, I have to start with my coach. And she did say it all, didn't she? Probably, probably more than I deserved. But there's no one, no one in the world like Jen. She is exceptional. She is the uber coach. She is the highest of the high in terms of personal and player development, competitiveness and strategy. And Jen was my first female role model and continues to be my best role model and is the primary reason why I came to Wake in the first place. So our, our relationship began in 1996 when Jen showed up at my Vermont house with a broken hand. From latest snowboarding adventure, right? watched my ice hockey games, and then she ate my family's meat lasagna, which honestly I thought tasted a little off, and I figured she must really want me. <laughs> but, but from the first moment that I met her, she welcomed me into her family. I believed in her. I believed in her vision. And I believed she would help me reach my potential, and more importantly, my team's potential, our team's potential. So let me tell you a little story. When I basically said, hey, I'm going to go to Wake Forest and play for Jen, a highly ranked coach that I had turned down called me and said, 
you are making the biggest mistake of your life. Wake will never win championships. Wake will never place people on the U.S. national team. How wrong they were. Jen delivers on everything, always does, always will. And she is the genesis of the Wake hockey dynasty. And during my playing days, I loved every minute playing for Jen and executing her vision. Even the three hour long talks, which I was the driver of many of them, okay, and five hour practices. I, and I was, you know, extremely competitive, almost out of control competitive, but, but Jen, you believed in me, you supported me, you stood up for me, and, and I can't even tell you how much that means to me in so many different ways. You always counseled me to the better path. And I look at you now with Karen and Nick and Gigi, and I hope someday that my husband and I can create such a beautiful, loving family that you have. And, and, and Jen mentioned this, but the second person that I'd like to thank is my father. My father actually passed away this same week, seven years ago. But I hope he is listening because I never got the chance to tell him that I loved him. And I, I thank him. My father was the first person I had ever trusted because I had to trust him with the most sacred unit of currency, my life. And just a quick little story. My, my mother did have some difficulties. And as a result, I was born with a defective heart. And for the first eight years of my life, I could not play hard. And I had to bury myself in books and let my mind do what my body could not. And one day I was in the ICU and I said, Doc, I want to go to the playroom. And he said, no, absolutely not. And I looked at my arms, which had been tied down to the boards, because you know, as a kid, they don't want you to rip them out. Or maybe that was just me. And I <laughs> vowed, I vowed never again to not be free. But I needed two things. I needed help and I couldn't do it alone. So I, I told my father, I didn't even ask him, I just said, Dad, fix it. And so every morning before school, we went to the mountain with his engineering graph paper, stopwatch, and I ran, right? And at first, I didn't make it past the third tree before I collapsed. And in Vermont, we don't measure things in feet or meters. That's way too logical. We measure things in trees. <laughs> and I can't tell you, I can't, for two years, there wasn't a single day where I didn't either collapse, throw up, or have him hold me back to life. But by 12, we had offset the heart that did not work to be twice as strong. And I was no longer last in those presidential fitness awards, which were the worst, <laughs> right? And I know my accomplishments were listed out, first, whatever, first in that. And I don't want you to think I was first in anything because I was last in everything. And it was only help that I was able to change my circumstances. Because I may have been born with a broken heart, but it was my father who taught me to never live with a broken spirit. And it wasn't until, just to brag on him a little bit, it wasn't until much later in life I realized how perfect my father really was. He was captain of his collegiate ice hockey team that went to the Final Four, Frozen Final Four last year. He would have gotten a kick out of that, right? President of his fraternity, brilliant mechanical engineer, but most importantly, a loyal husband and father who had a deep burden that I deeply respect. And I wish he was here because I could give him our fist pump, tell him I miss him ter terribly, and I owe him beyond the boundaries of words for his trust and help and commitment to help me. So this, this Hall of Fame induction isn't, I know Jen said this, but it isn't about me. It really isn't. It is a signal of the dynasty of the Wake Hockey program that it has become. And I am deeply honored to be the start of many future Hockey Hall of Famers for Wake Forest. My junior year was actually the first time we beat Carolina. And we beat them three times that year. Right? And, and we went to the final four, right? But Wake Forest has a tremendous legacy in women's athletics, starting with Doc Casey and Marge Crisp, you know, all the way to Rocks, Barbara, Diane, and Julie, who were the first to pave the way and make it easier for the rest of us. I can also attest, as you did, 
to President T.K. Hearn's support of, of women's athletics and his tremendous ability to write handwritten letters. I know I had the best teammates in the world, and for those hockey alumni in the room, can you please stand up? Can we please give them a round of applause? This is my family. So Christmases, Thanksgiving, summer school, I didn't go home very much, so I spent most of my time in my teammates' houses with Aaron, AKA Mooney Moon Dog. Can I get a whole oh, hell yeah? All right, the Cubics. Best mom cook ever, all right? Marsh, poo, right? Plenty of summers. And in 2006, we lost a member of our family and my summer buddy, Maria Whitehead. Okay, Maria's nickname, if you don't know her, was Re. And we shared a special language, even though we're a few years apart, we used to go back and forth and go schwa. And to this day, I can't tell you what schwa means, right? But I can tell you how much she meant to set the culture of Wake Hockey in the years to come. It was my own Wake Hockey family that got me over my own family's passing. And I thank them for their support and generosity and sharing their home and their relationships. Also, the three national championships did not hurt. I'd also like to thank my husband. Now, I have a confession to make. I did marry a Carolina man. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but, but Wake Forest has taught me a powerful lesson, which is the power of forgiveness. <laughs> and, and I have told him that everyone makes mistakes, like going to Carolina, and I forgive him. And, and my father actually probably said it best when my husband asked for his permission and blessing to marry me. My father replied, are you sure? You know what she's like, right? <laughs> it, and, and Amin said yes, right? He's like, yeah, I know she's competitive. And he's been putting up with me ever since. He is my best buddy and my soulmate. But just to set the record straight publicly, Wake Forest is way better than Carolina ever will be. <laughs> I hope Wake Forest never strays from its core people orientation, and we balance the strength of individualism and exceptionalism with the grace of humanitarianism. Wake Forest men and Wake Forest women are held to a higher standard through pro humanitate. And for me, Wake Forest began with people. Buildings come and buildings go away, but people live on through stories, legacy, and shared experience. This is what is sustainable. This is what endures. There's a Latin saying, ignis aram probat, or fire test gold. You can refine character through difficult circumstances. And I was fortunate I had the people of Wake Forest to pull me out of the fire and invest in me with their grace and compassion in my potential. And I implore Wake Forest to continue with its core people and to continue to reach into the fire because you may be surprised at what you save. It may just be an old gold and black. Go Deeks.